Good morning. My name is Josiah, and I serve as Secretary General of the Anglican Communion. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Lambeth Palace, home of the Archbishop of Canterbury, for our worship this morning, which celebrates the joy of connectedness of the Anglican Communion, a family of churches in more than 165 countries. Many in the Communion had hoped to be meeting back in August for the Lambeth Conference, which sadly couldn't happen this year due to the global health pandemic. However, we are looking forward to seeing one another at the rearranged conference in 2022. Lambeth Palace itself plays a part in the rich history of the Anglican Communion. From the chapel here, bishops have been consecrated and sent out to minister across the Communion. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Good morning. I am Anthony Pogo, and I work here at Lambeth Palace as the Archbishop of Canterbury's advisor on Anglican Communion Affairs. Before this, I was Bishop of Kajo Keiji in South Sudan. Our service today will tell us about friendships that cross continents and how communities in different parts of the world support one another in hard times and share in one another's joys in good times. The Anglican Communion has close links to Lambeth Palace. In the study above me, Archbishop Krenma compiled the Book of Common Prayer which still forms the basis of all worship in the Anglican Church today. In the various chairs and stalls we use in this chapel, there are beautiful animal plugs representing most of the different provinces in the Anglican Communion. A visual reminder of our sisters and brothers around the world, some of whom we will be hearing from during this service today. Our preacher for this service is Sharon Harper, president of the Mother's Union, an organization present in 84 countries around the world. We will also hear from the women on the front line and about companion link dioceses across the Anglican Communion. Let us start by singing together the hymn, Sia Hamba. We are walking in the light of God. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. 
let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind us our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll hear from the Reverend Michael Broadley about the companion links that the Diocese of Leicester have around the world. Hello, my name is Michael Broadley and I'm a vicar in the Diocese of Leicester. The Diocese of Leicester has four overseas links. There are Trichy in South India, Wyoming in America, Kotato and, and Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. And these links have been established for many years. And I think there are three bases for these links. The first one is partnership. It's really important that we partner together in the gospel. And this happens at lots of different levels. The first level, of course, is bishop to bishop. And, each, and the bishops meet together once every two or three years to worship, to pray, and to discuss things of mutual concern. And look at how we can develop and deepen our links together. However, also what we've tried to do is to get clergy and laity to come together as well. This has happened particularly twice in the recent past. The first was in Arusha um, in Tanzania, and the, second, and the first time was in Loughborough about four or five years ago. And those gatherings have been really enriching for those that have gone in both in terms of relationship, but also understanding in terms of worship, in terms of prayer, and in terms of understanding our cultural differences as well. So it happens that the, the relation, the partnership happens at a, an Episcopal level, a bishop level, but also at a clergy and laity level as well. And we're trying to take this one step deeper in the not too distant future. So Lusa, our, our, our black and Asian minority ethnic enabler in the Diocese of Leicester, is trying to draw together an intergenerational conversation. And so we've had people nominated from the different dioceses to take part in that. And that's really important and crucial in times such as this. But then we move from partnership um, to relationship. And what we try and do is, is, is for, as the basis of our, of our relationship, a basis of our partnership, to have significant relationships. And those relationships too happen at various different ways and also various different levels. The first, of course, is visits. Now, generally, we try and visit from um, Leicester to our overseas links, because sometimes, too, our links come and visit us. And those visits are quite important for mutual learning and mutual understanding. And uh, for me, it's quite important to learn as much as I can from the visits that I make to Tanzania. One of the areas that we're quite interested in, in, in Emmanuel in Loughborough, is church planting. We are a resource church and our task is to plant churches that plant churches. In the Diocese of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, their vision is to plant three or four hundred churches within about five years. So we have much to learn from them about, about church planting. Much of their church plants are in very remote areas that have had no experience or encounter with the gospel before. One of the ones that I visited is a place called Tuloa. Tuloa is run by Jasper and Mary with their, their family. They have, they have four children. And they planted a church in the middle of nowhere in quite a dangerous area. What I've learned from them is about commitment to the gospel and being confident in the gospel, but also sacrifice as well. They and their family have given up much to plant churches for the sake of others. And they too have just planted another church from their church plant. They've had to overcome significant difficulties, but they're moving on significantly in the gospel. But of course, we have links with other dioceses as well. So in Trichy, like there are some parish to parish links where parishes support one another. But also in Wyoming, they're quite, um, um, quite keen on fresh expressions. And there's a group of people that have visited from Wyoming to us to look at our fresh expressions agenda here in the Diocese of Leicester. So we try and really encourage relationships and mutual learning within those relationships. 
And I think on a weekly basis, what I, what I personally try and do is to communicate with two or three clergy um, in the Diocese of Mount Kilimanjaro, as well as the bishop via WhatsApp, either through messaging or sometimes through video conversations. It's a really quick and easy way of communicating, but also es establishing the relationship. What I've been struck during COVID times is that Bishop Stanley has, has contacted me two or three times just to check out to see how I am and, want to, want, and wants to pray for me and support me as well as the other clergy in the diocese as we go through particularly difficult times. But also we try and support each other as well financially. And what we try and do is um, we, well, we facilitate, we allow the diocese we're linked to to set the agenda. So we support the areas of ministry that they want to be supported. And in the Diocese of Mount Kilimanjaro, that's going to be church planting and, and the Bible College. In Katato, there is an eye hospital that needs particular support, as well as a Christian college there as well. In Trichy, I know certain parish to parish links. So there is financial support, and but also we make sure that the diocese, that their own diocese set the agendas and we, and we comply and we um, support that as much as we can. So I think being part of these links is very vibrant, very exciting and very enriching. And I'm just aware that I have as much, if not more to learn from the overseas links as they have from us. Thank you very much. Our first reading is brought to us by Jeraham Melendez from Costa Rica. En cuanto a las fechas y los tiempos, hermanos, no necesitan que les escribamos. Ustedes saben muy bien que el día del regreso del Señor llegará cuando menos se lo espere, como un ladrón que llega de noche. Cuando la gente diga, todo está en paz y tranquilo, entonces vendrá de repente sobre ello la destrucción, como le vienen los dolores de parto a una mujer que está encinta y no podrán escapar. Pero ustedes, hermanos, no están en la oscuridad para que el día del regreso del Señor los sorprenda como un ladrón. Todos ustedes son de la luz y del día. No somos de la noche ni de la oscuridad. Por eso, no debemos dormir como los otros, sino mantenernos despiertos y en nuestro sano juicio. Los que duermen, duermen de noche, y los que se emborrachan, se emborrachan de noche. Pero nosotros, que somos del día, debemos estar siempre en nuestro sano juicio. Debemos protegernos, como con una coraza, con la fe y el amor, y cubrirnos como con un casco, con la esperanza de la salvación. Porque Dios no nos destinó a recibir el castigo, sino a alcanzar la salvación por medio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Jesucristo murió por nosotros para que ya sea que sigamos despiertos o que nos durmamos con el sueño de la muerte, vivamos juntamente con Él. Por eso, anímense y fortalezcanse unos a otros, tal como ya lo están haciendo. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Women in the Anglican communion often have a critical role in their communities. They are often the first to spot rising tensions, act to de-escalate conflict, and are on the front line in supporting those suffering the consequences of violence. They may not occupy formal leadership roles, but many find themselves in positions of public responsibility. The women on the front line works to, to equip these women with skills to enable them to live out their, this vocation with confidence. Here, Jay Namure and Caloran Welby tell us more. Hello, my name is Jane Namrie and I serve as the coordinator for Women on the Frontline, which is part of Archbishop of Canterbury's Reconciliation Ministry here at Lambeth Palace. Women on the Frontline has a special lens supporting women throughout the Anglican Communion to be peacemakers and reconcilers in their own communities and contexts. Women on the Frontline bears in mind the problems that women face in conflict and post-conflict areas. And it is worth mentioning that within the Anglican communion, majority of women, including bishops and clergy wives, need equipping and training to enable them to support the ministry that God has called them to serve in the various provinces dioceses and communities. Let me welcome Mama Caroline Welby, often referred to as Mama Canterbury, to share with us the origin of women on the front line. Welcome, Caroline. In my early travels around the Anglican Communion, I met some extraordinary wives of bishops and archbishops. And I was struck by the ways in which, as soon as their husbands became bishops, they uh, were given a heavy burden of responsibility and expectation for all the women in their diocese, um, uh, which they had to uh, take on. And most of them did so willingly. But in spite of having little or no training or equipping and, in some cases, limited education. Women on the front line has its origin in seeking to support such women in their roles and callings with time away for retreat and training. I have been a bishop's wife for over 10 years, serving with my husband, Bishop Anthony, in the Diocese of Kajukeji, just before he was assigned this role as advisor to the Archbishop of Canterbury in 2016. It meant that I had to park and leave my home to serve alongside him in the ministry that God has called both, both of us into. I have had no training whatsoever over the years, but I have learned and I'm still learning in this job as a bishop's wife. The first element of women on the front line is, in some senses, a gift of space for them. We bring wives together across often large areas, and it is an opportunity for them to get to know one another and to share together and to pray together. But the most important thing is giving them space to hear again from God, that he loves them, that he chose them, that he calls them for the work that they're about. And um, that seems to us to be crucial um, to the work of women on the front line. Secondly, we want to seek in a small way to address that need for equipping, bearing in mind that these women often live in conflict or post-conflict areas. We offer some form of reconciliation uh, which they themselves identify as what they need in their own situation. These are some of the joys Women on the Front Line brings to women across the Anglican Communion. In these meetings, we often dance, laugh, cry on each other's shoulders as we pray, meditate on scripture, 
and encourage one another. I've come back from each Women on the Frontline visit uh, with joy at having got to know such a wonderful group of women and with huge admiration for the ways in which they live out their Christian lives and callings with joy in the face of often real hardship and difficulty and with gratitude for the reality of our global Christian family. When God calls us, he also does equip. And I'm inspired by the stories of these women. And in every visit, I always learn something new. God's call in unique contexts. As a bishop's wife from South Sudan, our stories and experiences are not different from the provinces we visited within the Anglican Communion. It's my hope and prayer that this ministry will continue to flourish within the Anglican Communion and beyond Lambeth 2022. Thank you. Gospel reading is brought to us by Bishop Hossam Naum, Bishop in the Diocese of Jerusalem and Dean of St. George's Cathedral. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. وَكَأَنَّمَا إِنسَانٌ مُسَافِرٌ دَعَى عَبِيدَهُ وَسَلَّمَهُمْ أَمْوَالَهُ فَأَعْطَى وَاحِدًا خَمْسَ وَزَنَاتٍ وَآخَرَ وَزْنَتَيْنْ وَآخَرَ وَزَنْ كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ عَلَى قَدْرِ طَاقَتِهِ وَسَافَرَ للوقت. فمضى الذي أخذ الخمس وزنات وتاجر بها فربح خمس وزنات أخرى وهكذا الذي أخذ الوزنتين ربح أيضا وزنتين أخريين أما الذي أخذ الوزن فمضى وحفر في الأرض وأخفى فضة سيده وبعد زمان طويل أتى سيد أولئك العبيد وحاسبهم فجاء الذي أخذ الخمس وزنات وقدم خمس وزنات أخرى قائلا يا سيد خمس وزنات سلمتني هو ذا خمس وزنات أخر ربحتها فوقه فقال له سيده نعما أيها العبد الصالح والأمين كنت أمينا في القليل فأقيمك على الكثير أدخل إلى فرح سيدك ثم جاء الذي أخذ الوزنتين وقال يا سيد وزنتين سلمتني هو ذا وزنتان أخريان ربحتهما فوقهما فقال له سيده نعما أيها العبد الصالح الأمين كنت أمينا في القليل فأقيمك على الكثير أدخل إلى فرح سيدك ثم جاء الذي أخذ الوزن الواحد وقال يا سيد عرفت أنك إنسان قاس تحصد حيث لم تزرع وتجمع من حيث لم تبذر فخفت ومضيت وأخفيت وزنتك في الأرض هو ذا الذي لك فأجاب سيده وقال له أيها العبد الشرير والكسلان عرفت أني أحصد حيث لم أزرع وأجمع من حيث لم أبذر 
فكان ينبغي أن تضع فضتي عند الصيارفة فعند مجيئي كنت أخذ الذي لي معربا فخذوا منه الوزنة وأعطوها الذي له العشر وزنات لأن كل من له يعطى فيزداد ومن ليس له فالذي عنده يؤخذ منه والعبد البطال اطرحوه إلى الظلمة الخارجية حيث يكون البكاء وصرير الأسنان This is the gospel of the Lord Thanks be to God Our summer today comes from Sharon Harper the president of the Mothers Union a worldwide organization Elected in 2018 Sharon leads the 142-year-old movement's 4 million members in 84 countries. It is by God's grace that I greet you in Christian love, the kind of love we must have one for another. This morning, I am here at St. Sidwell's Church in Guyana, and I understand there are only two of these churches the other one being St. Sidwell's in Exeter. Both of these churches have similar histories and the legend of St. Sidwell speaks of Sidwella, a devout Christian girl in the eighth century who used to leave the walled city of Exeter to take food to the villagers as they worked in the fields. Sadly, she was beheaded while kneeling in prayer. It was in this church 33 years ago that I became a Mother's Union member. And since then, I have been blessed with an avenue through which I could journey and share God's love and the good news of salvation. And I am sure this is not only my story, but the story of so many who serve God in other areas in the Anglican communion. There seems to be something about being a Christian that not only compels us to serve the needy and vulnerable, but it also encourages us to connect with God through his word. It is in his word that we find true peace and comfort in a world of uncertainty. Archbishop Justin, on the verge of the second wave, said, this is harder than the first wave. Let's be calm compassionate and courageous. In our reading today from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, Paul speaks of the day of the Lord, the last days, a period of time and seasons in which he says, as Christians, we do not have to be afraid because we have the knowledge of the things that will happen. So we should be in a state of preparedness, living with expectation, in calm yet being alert, clothed with the breastplate of hope and love. He says we should encourage one another and build each other up. I really find this text meaningful because it gives us every reason to share the good news while extending God's love to others. So can I ask, how are we extending this love while we wait on the day of the Lord? In Britain and Ireland, MU members have been sharing love in so many ways during the pandemic, including supporting key workers, popping information in letterboxes, 
engaging in phone circles and doorstep chats, and encouraging walk and talk groups. In Uganda, through broadcasts, MU members are raising the awareness of gender-based violence. And this is working very well in increasing the confidence of communities to report perpetrators. This resulted in Mother's Union collaborating with the police to rescue 25 adolescent girls who were trafficked. They are now receiving psychosocial support from the members there. Sadly, this is only one of many stories. And as we approach the period of the international campaign of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, it is my fervent prayer that the entire Anglican Communion would join me in the call for an end to all forms of violence against women and girls. We must act as Jesus would by giving a voice to the voiceless, by standing together online on December 5th the Global Day of Action, to boldly declare no more one in three. No more must one in three women globally face any form of abuse. Gender-based violence is an injustice. It must be condemned and removed from God's world. While we support two Christian movements, namely Thursdays in Black and Side by Side in this arena, we continue to pray for divine intervention as together we actively challenge the structures and systems that prevent women and girls from participating fully in society. And at the same time, fully involve men and boys in redefining just and equal gender relationships. Sometimes our world makes faithfulness challenging. But Jesus empowers us to be faithful, courageous, and purposeful in our spiritual walk. May today be a new day of committing afresh to extending God's love wherever we are. May God's grace be sufficient while we wait for the day of the Lord. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen.
leading us in our prayers is Canon John Kafuanka, Director for Mission at the Anglican Communion Office. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. Pray for the primates and bishops, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for the clergy and church leaders across our communion, that they may be strengthened as they guide the people of God through this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are affected by coronavirus and other illnesses in our nations and around the world, through illness and isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those caring for the sick and researching for treatments, that through their skills and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy. Restrain us from excesses and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now say the Lord's Prayer in different languages from across the Anglican Communion. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven. <laughs> Dila Mukothone, Mota Matale, Hokukle Isiko, Kera Natarki. Como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Jaga Ritzarela, Ba Barileufela. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, forever and ever. Amen. We thank God for the variety of worshippers across the Anglican Communion and for their work and witness every day. May the blessing of God the Father, who made from one every nation that occupies the earth, of God the Son, who brought us for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and of God the Spirit, who brings us together in unity. Be with us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>